Hello and welcome to Seattle, Washington and the 181st ASA meeting. I'm your host, Larry Frum, and I'm the Senior Press Officer for the American Institute of Physics. For this morning, for today, I should say, we're going to have three different press conferences talking about acoustics from baby monitors to killer whales to how older people uh, dealt with the COVID restrictions. So first of all, we're going to start with um, three great presentations. I was really excited to, to listen and watch all of these things. Um, the first topic, first person to speak for us today will be Angie Salas from Johns Hopkins University. And I know that this particular topic is very excitable for my wife because she really likes bats a lot. Um, but, but Angie's going to talk about how bats are actually predicting where their food is going to be. So welcome, Angie. Thank you so much. Um, well, I'm here to tell you today about how bats use predictive strategies to track moving auditory prey. So um, as Larry said, my, my name is Angie Sages, and I, um, I'm currently a postdoc in Cindy Moss's lab at Johns Hopkins, but I'm transitioning to start my own lab at the University of Illinois at Chicago, where I'm going to continue to study bats and how they process natural soundscapes. So bats use predictive strategies to track moving targets. Given what we know about how visual tracking works, we hypothesize that bats would also use predictive strategies. So if you think about um, a man here uh, tracking this tennis ball that's coming towards them, you can see that the man on the other side of the court is already preparing himself for where the ball is going to fall. So his brain is predicting where that ball is going to fall to um, do the appropriate motion. Now, bats don't receive this fluid um, stream of information. They only have acoustic snapshots because they're auditory specialists. They use echolocation to build a scene of their surroundings. So they make calls, and that sound bounces off of the objects in the environment, and with that, they build an acoustic scene. Now, you can imagine trying to catch a ball in a room illuminated only with strobe light. Or as you can see in this little image here, um, there's a woman dancing, and we can infer that she's dancing. Our brain infers that she's dancing, but we are seeing only snapshots of her posture. Now, bats are excellent predators, and I'm going to show you here um, a video of a bat in the lab. I'm there uh, on the corner of the screen. Um, I'm holding a bat. The bat is going to fly out of my hand, and the video, video has been slowed down because the sounds that the bats produced are in the ultrasound range. So we slow it down to make it audible for human hearing. And you will see how it's producing these calls that are snapshots to track that target in the middle of the screen. And at the bottom right, we'll see the spectrogram, which is a way for us to visualize these sounds that the bats are producing. There it goes. And there it caught the, the prey. So what we did to explore how bats track moving targets is we trained bats to sit on a platform and track a target that was moving across its acoustic field. And we measured how the bat aimed its head and its echolocation towards it. So one of our bats here is doing the task, and I'm going to play this video for you. The target is going to appear from the lower um, right side of the screen. Um, and you'll see that she moves it, her head and produces echolocation. And again, this video has been slowed down. So we used mathematical models um, to explore what were the strategies that these bats were doing. And our data showed that the bats were always anticipating where the target would be. They were always aiming their head further, further ahead of where the target was. And our, our models suggested that what the bats are using is an estimation of velocity from these echoes, uh, and they're further adjusting their heads to anticipate where the target will be. So 
like visually guided animals, but integrate sensor information to predict target trajectories. And um, I'm going to just say that bats are an excellent model to study auditory processing because they're auditory specialists with this active sensing system. They're social animals that produce an array of communication calls, and um, they are mammals, which allows for comparative work across species. So working with bats can give us insights into how the brain processed um, sounds that are behaviorally relevant. Um, and as I said, as mammals and auditory specialized, they emerge as the, an outstanding model for our research questions. So they can advance the understanding of how the mammalian auditory, auditory system works. Um, and this is not only important for animals, um, but also for those who rely on hearing to navigate their surroundings or whose hearing is impaired and for whom auditory discrimination of sounds uh, comes with an increased cognitive load. And these are the type of questions that I will explore in my future lab at the University of Illinois in Chicago. Thank you so much. <laughs> yep, sorry. Thank you, Angie. Um, First of all, congratulations on the new lab. Thank you. That's pretty awesome. Secondly, you were, you were talking about how the bats are predicting. But unlike a tennis ball, which kind of sort of moves in a straight line, you know, spins and stuff like that, but prey moves in such a random way. Were you able to find out that, uh, or find in your research, that the bats were adjusting to that kind of reactive movement? Yes, actually, uh, that's a great question, that, and that is part of what we published in our paper. Um, so we tested conditions where the prey actually changed um, direction or changed velocity or even disappeared behind an occluder for part of the trajectory. And for all those conditions, we found that still the bat was always anticipating where the target would be. When there were um, higher changes in the velocity or direction, the bat also increased its focalization rate. And this makes sense because then the bat is trying to get more information from the environment to adjust those predictions because those predictions he would still anticipate or the bat would still anticipate, but it would commit more errors as the trajectories uh, got more difficult. We have a couple questions from our web, our streaming webcast. Uh, do you think other echolocating animals use this strategy too? Yes, I, I, would, uh, I would think so. I mean, we have here other researchers that are working with marine mammals, uh, and it's very likely that this uh, sensory integration that allows for predictive internal models, uh, it's something that is shared across many species. As we can see, this from, um, from visual to auditory guided behaviors, it's something that is still shared. So there's no reason to believe that it wouldn't be shared uh, with other echolocating animals. This question is from Rick Lovett. Can you elaborate on the applications of this to humans and other animals? Yes, of course. So bats have brains that are very similar in, term, in terms of their um, morphology and neurophysiology to that of humans. So the more we can understand how the bat's auditory processing work, the more insights we can have into how humans process language. So for example, one of the questions that I'm going to be working on in my future lab is um, how bats discriminate sounds that are very similar in their acoustic features, but carry different meanings. So for example, an echolocation call is behaviorally relevant, um, and a food claiming call which is a social call, it's also behaviorally relevant. They're very similar acoustically, but they're very different in meaning. So I always talk about how in conferences, I say I work with bats and people ask me, rats? Uh, and I'm like, no, no, bats. So those are two words that are similar. They're acoustically similar, but different in meaning. So how does the brain make that categorization? What are the neural circuits? And these are all things that we can't really study uh, in animals, but bats present themselves as the perfect animal model for these questions. One more question from the webcast. Do bats also use this technique to keep track of each other? That's a great question, and uh, possibly. Uh, I don't have really the answer to that, but they are aware of flying um, bats in their environment. Um, so they probably are not tracking the other bats as closely as they would be tracking um, a prey item. But there's some research from my advisors, my postdoc advisors lab, uh, Cindy Moss, um, that shows that actually bats can eavesdrop into another bat's uh, echolocation calls and follow the other bat in silence. And in this case, 
to arrange that, um, that flight uh, configuration, they would have to at least track the bat a, a little bit. So it's possible to think that they're using this, um, this um, methodology to, to track the other bats. Great topic, a lot of fun. And like I say, bats are pretty cool creatures anyway, so. Thank, Thank you, you, yes, I think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much, Angie. Thank you.